I I don't have an intro for this one. And I've never had that problem before. Then again, I've never come across a movie as off the wall and frustratingly mysterious as this one. The Elm Chanted Forest is an animated movie from 1986. It was made in Croatia. I didn't even know Croatia made cartoons. But this was the first animated movie produced in Croatia, and it's considered to be one of their best films. Huh. It says here it also aired on the Disney Channel, but I don't know when that was. And that's it. That's all I know about this movie. Most of what I learned came from Wikipedia, and there's almost nothing else about it on the internet. At least nothing that sounds legit. This is as big of a mystery as Sebastian Starbear, or Robin and the Dreamweavers. So... There's nothing left to do but watch it, I guess. Here we go. So the movie opens with... The Tasmanian Devil? What is that? What is that? I am Baron Burr. I ride the wind. So that's Baron Burr. He uh rides the wind apparently. Behold the enchanted elm, guardian spirit of our fantasy forest. But now there is also a dark power. Just over a minute, this movie has generated more nightmare fuel than Food Fight. Many have run away, most of all the beavers, for they are builders and so are hated by the forces that destroy. No, not the beavers! Now who's Barney Bear gonna fight with? One day, a man named Peter shows up in the forest to paint, but apparently he's not very good. Unless you like modern art, I guess. But luckily, he takes a nap underneath the giving tree, and it gives him magical powers, which allows him to understand the animals and improves his artistic abilities. J. Edgar Beaver, to be precise. J. Edgar Beaver? Like J. Edgar Hoover? What? But not all is pleasant in the forest, like you needed me to remind you, as we meet our villain, who's a cactus, I think. Caution! Caution! Why do you warn me, you pinheaded bird? Oh! So, Thistle, my appointed wizard. No! Oh! So this guy named Emperor Spine tells his wizard named Thistle he's concerned about the human because there's a prophecy about him ending the reign of the cactus. Because the cacti took over. Or something. Who wrote this? Also, he doesn't like beavers. For some reason. Right now, he is at the beaver's lodge. Beaver? Did you say... Did you say... Beaver? Toothpick! Did I not order all beavers executed? Yeah, I hate beavers. Always building dams and chopping down trees and shit. Taking jobs away from honest, hard-working... whatever we are. Meanwhile, word gets out about Peter's new powers, and all the animals show up to have their picture painted. <laughs> oh, boy. Bonjour, Monsieur l'artiste. I am Fifi Fox, and I have come to pose for you. No, no, no. Do not thank me, monsieur. I know true artists want only the most beautiful models. And, uh, how shall I say it? C'est moi. Why do cartoons insist on sexualizing animals like this? It's confusing for kids. Besides, if I'm going to be confused by a French furry named Fifi, I will stick to the experts, thank you very much. 
Not that I would know anything about that. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, Thistle tells Peter that Spine has invited him to lunch, but the other animals warn him not to go. Naturally, Spine is upset by this. So much so, he takes it out on the audience by summoning this jerk again. How may I be of service, Emperor Spine? You can start by using your inside voice. Spine tries to find out what he can do about the human, but Burr says something cryptic and leaves. You cannot stand against the wind, Emperor Spine. You must learn to bend. Such a useful character, isn't he? What can be done, your grace? He is no longer with the beaver. The beaver? Did you say... Did you say... Did you say... The Beaver! Cut that word, Pinhead! You know, maybe he's just upset over the cancellation of Angry Beavers. Thistle is sent out to find Peter again, but runs into yet another... uh, lovable character. I am Thistle, court magician, the Empress Spine. At your service, Great Bear. Not Great Bear, son. Hey, buddy Bear. Hey, that's great enough at my service, huh? Well, can you do anything about this thorn in my size 18s? I'll try. <laughs> Nothing to it, eh? <laughs> Haven't I seen enough talking bears on this show? This'll tell Sports Bear that he needs his help finding Peter while they're at a pub. You know, for kids. Leave him alone, Buddy Bear. Peter Pallet is a friend of the forest. Well, I don't know, Jay Egger. Thistle here is my teammate. Touch the painter, and there will be no more light bear on the house. Oh, there, son. That's a heavy penalty. Hmm, helping a new friend, or my alcoholism. Hmm. That's a tough one. Also, did he say bear instead of beer? Touch the painter, and there will be no more light bear on the house. Yeah, nice try. We know what it is. Then they bust out into a song. Come with me, let's burn out. Come with me, to step inside. Come with me, and a hold down. Come with me, to pull a ride. Well, there was alcohol about. I guess it was inevitable. After this song that goes on for way too long, they eventually find Peter. Hello, Mr. Bear. Have you come for a portrait? Not a portrait, son. More of an action collage. The glory years of Buddy Bear in the National Bear League. Well, I hope I can show you as the great athlete you are. Were, son. Old Buddy is retired. Just got a room full of trophies and a helmet full of memories. And a midlife crisis, apparently. But Foghorn Leghorn Bear becomes friends with Peter, which gets Cactus Butt upset again. So he sends out his army of sentient axes to wreck the forest. Yeah, that's his army. It's different, I'll give it that. Then he tries to get the help of a fire creature. And this is the first thing I kind of like about this movie so far. The creature looks evil, but is actually just a benign force of nature and refuses to help. However, Spine tricks him into causing a forest fire, and the animals reenact the fire scene from Bambi. But Peter uses his MacGuffin brush to put out the fire, and the fire guy tells him it was all just an accident. How did this happen? Emperor Spine tricked me. It was an accident. Accidents with fire can be prevented if we are careful. It is so. Except in this case, apparently. Oh well, time to rebuild. Meanwhile, uh, Boss Nass is upset his swamp is full of debris from the fire. Who has done this? <laughs> Sir, slime garbage. I must clean my waterways. But instead he takes a nap while being serenaded by frogs in a sequence that makes me wonder what LSD is like.
Spine shows up and tries to get his help, but once again, he refuses. So he tricks him into flooding the forest. Yup, it's exactly like last time. Someone is getting less sex later. <laughs> and of course, Peter saves the day with his magic brush. <laughs> I have only begun to sharpen my wits against them. <laughs> Oh, great enchanted elm. My forest friends tell me that because I slept under your branches, I became elm chanted. Title drop! It turns out that the magic Peter was given is only temporary, and he has until morning to fulfill the prophecy and save everyone. They figure out that the reason Spine is evil is because he's never bloomed flowers on his body, and if they can help him fulfill his nature, he'll become good. I don't care. Whatever gets us through this weird movie the fastest, I'm okay with it. Thistle comes up with a potion that will help them, but he gets kidnapped by the Axemen, and Peter goes after him, only to fall into a hole. Baron Burr, trust you to show up when the work is almost done. Your labors are far from over this night, friend Beaver. Without the artist and the magician, your work will be for nothing. Without? What, what do you... Look for one in darkest cell. The other neath the earth doth dwell. Stop speaking in riddles and tell them what they need to do. I'm sorry for yelling, but characters like this are a huge peeve of mine. You know, the kind that give a cryptic message when something important is at stake? It's like Dungeon Master from Dungeons and Dragons. The little dwarf always pissed me off. And remember, sometimes by looking back, you can see a clearer path through what lies ahead. Oh, brother, here he goes again. But beware, for only beauty can defeat the eye of the beholder. Uh, yeah, Dungeon Master, you think you could stop with the riddles? We're a bunch of teenagers lost in a dangerous world. We could be killed. Ah, but I see good old J. Edgar has sent out a mug of light bear. <laughs> right neighborly, I'd say. Nobody, don't. Now I know how the roses in the rose bowl feel. <laughs> oh. Oh, now see what you've done, you, you, oaf. We'll have to gather more herbs, and Peter and Thistle are still missing. Don't worry, old beaver, old pal, old bear tender. I'll find them. Once again, buddy, your alcoholism has screwed us. But yeah, Thistle gets taken back to Spine's castle. Murthy, great active king. They mean you no harm. They want to help you. At the Beaver Saloon... Beaver? Did you say... Did you say... Did you say... Beaver? Yes, he said Beaver. What about it? Meanwhile, that whole Peter fell down led to the Mushroom Kingdom. And apparently the Mushroom people are actually bad because they keep him prisoner. And as if things weren't weird enough... This happens. Shuffle, shuffle, getting down in the mushroom underground. <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of types of mushrooms in the world. You'll soon be just another one. Shuffle, shuffle, soon you'll be just a fungus club like me. Now, you be quiet, my friend, and soon you will be a true mushroom. I do not want to be a mushroom. 
I demand to be set free. <laughs> I will leave Michael J. Mushroom in charge. He is a very reliable guard. He won't beat it, Mr. Truffle. Watch me do my mushroom shuffle. Ow! Truffle, shuffle, Michael's knee. Think those dead mushroom feet. Well, good. We can add racism to the list of things wrong with this movie. Back at the castle, Thistle is going to be executed by the Destroyer, but J. Edgar Beaver shows up to save him, and he brought an intense 80s synth track with him. What is this, Beverly Hills Cop? Eh, enough of this normal stuff. Let's look at something weird. not in the right mindset for this. So why don't we ask someone that is? A coked up cartoon writer, what do you think of this movie? I'm freaking out, man! Well, great. They scared coked up cartoon writer. That's actually kind of impressive. Well, as fascinatingly horrifying as this is, let's move on, shall we? Buddy saves Peter from drug trip number two or three for this movie. Then they regroup to complete the potion and try to sneak into the castle. Ouch! Watch out for my paw. Your paw doesn't live around here. Ah! Uh -huh. Is this movie almost over? But first they need to distract the guards. Guess how they do it? Finally, they get the potion into Spine's mouth, which causes him to bloom and become all good and pink or whatever. The peasants rejoice, J. Edgar finds himself a lady beaver, and Peter's magic runs out so he says goodbye to his animal friends and leaves the forest. While having some kind of hallucination. Maybe he ate one of those mushroom people. So that's the Elm Chanted Forest. This was strange. At first I thought it was going to be some harmless kids movie, but I had no idea it was going to be like this. The one thing I kind of liked about it was some of the bad guy looking creatures weren't really bad guys, though they were kind of wasted as they just sort of came and went. Not that I would have expected much from them anyway. 
I'm trying to figure out what the point of this movie was. They seem to touch on an environmental message, but if it did have one, it got lost in all the insane stuff that happened. Maybe the message was, don't be an asshole or something, I don't know. There was so much bizarre imagery in this movie, it could rival Kid Video. Though Kid Video still wins because it was a TV show. If this is one of Croatia's best, I'd really hate to see their worst. It's bad. Like, fascinatingly bad. But it's not like it's easy to find. The DVD is long out of print and pretty pricey online. Apparently there was a sequel to this movie too, but that's even harder to find. And probably not worth it. So, in conclusion, as much as I hate this saying, Elm Chanted Forest is a thing that exists. Alright, I got one movie left, and... It's something I've been holding on to since I started doing this. And the reason I put it off for so long is because... It, it's just one of those things that you can't believe is real. But no more stalling. This needs to happen. I wonder um, if anyone will get this joke. <laughs> Does anybody know what this is? <laughs> this is the weirdest joke I've ever done, probably. I don't know. It's up there, at least. <laughs> oh boy. I don't even think this would work, but whatever. It's funny. <laughs>